بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم The first episode of شیخ محمود شبستری's Rose Garden of Mysteries that is گلشن راز In the introductory video in the previous video I told you why شیخ محمود wrote this book how he wrote it and how important this book is and why it is important In this episode we are going to start reading the poems together and uh, seeing what he has to say but it is important to me as a translator that uh, I, sh I should make this note here in the beginning that uh, I do not like translating poems word for word, line by line into, into another language. I respect those who do and I have done it before. But uh, it seems that when you do that, um, the, the translations do not reflect the poem accurately. So it's as if we are doing injustice to the poetry. So I think instead of uh, translating the poem line by line, word for word, mostly I will be not translating the lines, but explaining the philosophical meanings of those lines. And in my explanation, I'm using the most famous commentary, Lahiji, as you can see the book here. And I will be analyzing it parallel with other philosophical thinkers like Ibn Arabi, Rumi, or other thinkers. So let's get into it. So the book starts with this line. Bename anke jan ra fikrat amukht, chirag dil be noor jan barafrukht. In the name of he who taught the soul thinking, he who lit the heart's light with the soul's illumination. So according to the commentaries, um, fikrat, the word fikrat in um, in Farsi, which is trans, could be translated as thought, thinking in English. Um, in mystical philosophical literature, it means a journey, a journey from the exterior to the interior, from the form to the meaning. Knowledge and recognition comes through fekrat or thinking. In the first line, he said, Bename uh, Ankejanra fekrat amu. The word jan in Farsi is soul. So soul is the recipient of that ma'rifa, of that recognition, of that knowledge that comes through going from the exterior to the interior. In the second part of the first line, he said, Chirag dil benure jan barafrukht. Dil in Farsi means heart. But uh, for those who are familiar with Islamic tradition, it is not the mind that is the center for receiving knowledge, for receiving the divine manifestations. It is the heart. So the heart is the middle ground between the spirit and the nafs in, in Arabic or in Farsi, which can be translated as the soul or the psyche. So we have the knowledge coming from the spirit reflected into the heart. The divine manifestations are opened up into the heart and through the heart, they are transferred to the soul. So again, we have spirit, we have soul, and in the middle, there is heart. So the heart is what gets the information, the knowledge, the manifestations from the spirit and reflects it into the soul. So when he says, He who lit the heart's light with the soul's illumination, the Sheikh is alluding to this point that the heart gets the knowledge from the spirit and transfers it, reflects it into the soul. And Lahiji says something interesting here. He says the reason that uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari has chosen, chosen the word uh, light and lighting is this. Um, when, when it's dark, you cannot see the things around you. So you need light for the perception to happen. So similarly, to see the divine oneness, the divine unity reflected onto the cosmos, you need uh, to open your heart and use its light to see what's going on around you. With this eye, it's not going to be possible. It's all darkness. And these eyes do not have the capacity to see in that darkness. To be able to see that oneness, to be able to see that unity, you need the light of the heart. The, the second line says, now, there are two key terms in this line. Um, 
before I open up uh, the, the line, it's better uh, to understand what those words mean. The first in the beginning of the line it says fazl, the fazlash. And in the second part of the line, it says phase, phazash. So those sh at the end of these words, fazl, fazlash, phase, phazash. The, the, the sh that appears after these words are used in Persian language as uh, the pronoun for the third person. So let's, for the sake of simplicity, translate both fazl and phase as grace. They're a little bit different, but let's say grace. So a rough translation of the line is, uh, from his grace, the two worlds became enlightened. And from his grace, Adam's soil became rose garden. Now, according to Lahiji, um, there are two kinds of manifestations. So in the first kind of manifestation, every being in all worlds are equal in receiving this manifestation. This is how the divine reflects himself onto the cosmos. So everybody and every entity receives it. So the first line refers to that. The Fazlash, from his grace, so by this grace he's referring to the first kind of manifestation. From this grace, uh, the two worlds became enlightened. It means God disclosed himself, manifested himself, and the world came to be. So the world became enlightened. But in the second part, it says, the phases Khaka Adam Gasht Kulshan. Here, according to Lahiji, um, he's not talking about the same manifestation. He's talking about the second kind of manifestation, which is not reflected onto every entity, but only to those who have taken a step into this path, into the path of religion, into the path of mysticism. This is the manifestation that separates the atheist from people of faith. A manifestation, he takes a further step, that separates ordinary people, even ordinary people of faith, from those who have gotten into higher levels. Consider mystics as separate from normal people of faith. So this, uh, this, this manifestation is special to those, uh, like the higher you go, the stronger this manifestation gets, the higher the knowledge becomes. In the beginning of the path, uh, you're not gonna uh, receive uh, the divine manifestation uh, very strongly, but the higher you go, the more you receive it. In the third line, he says, means in the blink of an eye. So the first part of the line goes like this, the powerful that in one blink of an eye, now we go to the second part. So the appearance of the second part of the line is um, he created the seen and the unseen, the manifest world and the hidden world. From what? From Kaf and Noon. Kaf in Persian alphabet is K in English and Noon is N. So what does that mean? He is, he is referring to uh, the Quranic verse, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah, and chapter 2, verse number 117. When he wills to create something, he just says, Kun, that is, be an order, be, Kun, and that thing becomes. So the Quran describes creation through an order. Be, and that thing becomes. So that be in Arabic is kun, that consists of k, k in English, and n in Farsi and in Arabic, that is n in English. So uh, when he says the kafunun from k and from n, he created the unseen and the seen, he's referring to this order. He's referring to the Quranic verse that he said be, and the world of unseen and the seen came to be. So let's see what philosophy and mysticism and, uh, has to say here through the tongue of Lahiji. Um, he says, look, there is um, the oneness of the essence, the oneness that God has in his essence. From there, he has a determination, a self-manifestation. Into what? Into the oneness of names and qualities. So we have a oneness here and a oneness here. Consider this high level of oneness. 
So a self-manifestation happens. What is the nature of this manifestation? We will talk about that. A self-manifestation happens, and from this, a second level, a lower degree of oneness appears, and that is the oneness of the names and qualities. So now let's consider this transition, this determination. Uh, the trans that transition, that determination uh, has been uh, referred to with several names, uh, one of which is the intellect, the other one, the holy effusion, the pen, the tablet, the great spirit, the mother of books, and the Mohammedan reality. So William Chittick defines this determination this way. He says, God's self-disclosure to himself in himself. So he discloses himself in, in that uh, essential oneness. He discloses himself to himself in himself. And um, the, the world of uh, names and qualities come to be. So the first determination, the self-disclosure happens. And through that, the divine breath comes to be. And by the divine breath, in allusion to the Quran, is meant the manifestation of the real, of God, through the entities. So through the divine breath, through the order kun, be, the world came to be. Uh, for example, in Quran, it says, um, after I proportioned him, Adam, I breathed my spirit into him. The verb breathe is used. So in, in, in philosophical, mystical literature, that grace, that giving, that gift is referred to with the verb breath. So through the divine breath, the world came to be. And uh, the reason uh, the, the, this simile is used uh, both in Quran and in um, philosophical, mystical literature is that the breath itself has nothing. Like when I breathe, you cannot hear meaningful things, right? But when I combine those, when I combine that breath, actually it's not uh, accurate to say combine. When, that's, when that breath passes th through words, through letters, the meanings come to be. In reality, there is only one breath, but when, when only, but when that one breath passes through multiple, multiplicity of words, phrases, letters, we see meaningful words and sentences. So similarly, the divine oneness is in fact one. So the real is one. When it passes, when it's breathed into the multiplicity of the entities in the world, we see the multiplicity that we see in the world. There is no such thing as multiplicity. The reality is only one and only one. The multiplicity is in the relative domain. In reality, there is no relativity. There is no multiplicity. So back to the line, The powerful, that in one blink of an eye, created the seen and the unseen world um, through the order kon, be. In the next line, the Sheikh says, We just said that the word qalam refers to the first determination the first self-disclosure of God. So, when he started his first determination, he created thousands of designs into the tablet of nothingness. This nothingness can be seen in different ways. On appearance, we could say, well, these entities did not exist before, and um, God created them. But from an Ibn Arabi perspective, for those who are familiar with his work, this nothingness could be um, what Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari refers to um, the world of Ayana Sabita, that is, the world of immutable entities. What are those entities? Like, I cannot explain them in detail. I have already done that in my Ibn Arabi video. Please refer to that. That's too much for, for this short video. Uh, but the general thought is this, uh, before creation, all entities existed in the world of God's knowledge. So those entities are not essences, like don't be mistaken, they are not essences. It's just that uh, for every entity we have, for every entity we see, 
there was the whatness of that entity, the quiddity of that entity in the world of God's knowledge. And that whatness and that quiddity is called the immutable entity, or al thabit plural, al thabit are the immutable entities. So it could be read that through the world of immutable entities, God created thousands of designs. Consider them the reference. God uses that reference to reflect those entities onto the thousands and millions and billions of multiplicity that we see in this world. So the poem continues, but I'm going to stop right here because um, this poem is a very dense one. Um, it has different topics. So, so far we were discussing creation and I'm going to stop discussing creation right here because there in the next video, in our next episode, we're going to get into uh, the creation of human being, of Adam. And I don't want to confuse the topics. So in, in, in these short episodes, I will go topic by topic. This video only on creation. Thank you very much for watching. A pleasure having you with us. And I hope this video was helpful. Assalamu alaikum. See you soon.